I must say. I must say. All right. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to the Writer's Workshop where we critique our user-submitted stories. Um, Flam, go ahead and introduce this week's fic. All right, guys. So today we have someone who we know and whom we are very fond of and she That's decided awesome. to place one. She decided to uh, submit one of her stories for critique. So we have, for our reading pleasure today, or possibly displeasure, but we don't think so, Earth Ponies Are the Best Kissers. Now this is tagged as teen for romance and has about 452 readers. So the description states, two great secrets govern Prince Bluebug's life, his passion for writing romantic poetry and the mayor who is the latest target of his affection. And that's all we have to go by. So we'll just have to see exactly what this is about. So, uh, of course, let's introduce the critiquers very quickly. My name's Flutter Priest. We have Milk. I'm not dead. A non pencil. I'm almost dead. Enigmatic Otaku. I never know what to say for these things. And obviously, the dulcet tones of Flam and Werfer. I'm actually dead. Uh, uh, 1,265 words. Let's jump straight in. Um, oh, goodness, that threw me because I thought it was an author's note. Uh, let's jump straight in. Earth ponies are the best kissers. Of all the creatures fine and equine, none could match. The trembling shiver of a nervous youth, the sensual lip embrace of lovers, or the bittersweet farewell of parting. For it is only earth ponies who can use their lips to dance. With grace sublime of unspoken passion. Surely, you jest, I hear you scoff. Lips are lips, a muzzle's a muzzle. A unicorn and pegasus could do just as much, if not five times better. The sound of shattering glass breaks my concentration. Of course this would happen when I'm writing. I fight the urge to kick the inkwell at the wall. The shattering is followed by hushed voices. I can hear them whispering to one another. Isn't it enough that they steal my day with their constant chatter that they must have my night as well? What are earth ponies but shapely bovines, deprived of grace, wings, and magic? Their bones are thick, their hooves reek of mud. They use their mouths to move objects about. How could they reach the heights of sensual refinement? I nod. For all that is true, but I say again, Earth ponies are the best kissers. Not. The clopping of hooves fills the corridor, each clank drilling into my ear. There goes another muse, murdered by common stupidity. At times I really want to leave this place, go somewhere quiet. What I wouldn't give for a small cabin on a peaceful meadow. A nice fantasy. Yet even I'm aware that it's impossible. Poetry doesn't grow food, nor cook nor fix leaky roofs. Do you have to face the same problems, my sweet? I glance at the window. Or are you above such trivialities? The thought of her rekindles my creativity. Words start dancing in my mind once more, pleading, begging to be put on paper. Dipping the quill in the inkwell, I continue. Not through will or practice, but by design. For only thus do they give form to the emotions within, through subtle movements of the lips and tongue. They pave the way to godly ecstasy. For Princess Celestia herself, goddess of the heavens, has these tools bestowed upon them. Unicorns need not even touch their lips in love. It is through magic that they embrace two essences melding into one, as time itself takes rest and watches them float in the endlessness of aether. Earth ponies cannot swim that gentle sea of time, or taste the violet embrace of a unicorn's love spell. What they can do instead is kiss. Prince Blue Blood! A voice at the door tears me away from my writing. Is everything all right, your highness? The maids mentioned they saw light coming from under your door. I feel I could scream. 
can't I at least be allowed to write in my own room without someone making a fuss? Is that a crime? Everything is ideal. I raise my voice just enough to show my displeasure. Already I know I'll be in the gossip column of every newspaper of Karen a lot. Spoiled prince yells at guard or some other unimpressive title. Could you please ensure I'm not disturbed? Yes, your highness, the guard replies, then trots off with all the clanking in the world. The armor rattling makes the hairs of on coat stand on end. You have no idea. I have no idea how you manage. I gaze out of the window once more. Even the noise reminds me of her. I've only been to her flat twice. Two times too many. Squeaky doors, snoring neighbors, foals crying day and night. How can you survive amongst these incessant distractions? I gripe the, grip the quill with my magic and focus on the scroll before me. I must finish my poem before dawn. At last, at least the first draft, gritting my teeth, I continue. What do Pegasi know of kisses? Their wings all sensations hold. A wing brush makes them blush like the setting sun. A feather nibble might as well tone a night of passion. When Pegasi lock their wings in a love embrace, space is lost and gravity destroyed. Raw passion through their senses shoots like lightning piercing a cloud. Earth ponies have no wings to sense the wind's caress or feel the heartbeat of their lover. What they could do instead is kiss. More profound than the starful screeches of a cat barge in from the window, causing the sentence to flee from me. More profound. More profound. I almost grasp my thought, but another dreadful meow intervenes, sharper than a slap in the muzzle. More profound than my hatred of felines, I grumble as I shut my eyes. Why didn't I learn magic? Then I could wrap myself in silence as while I write. Servants, guards, cats, how can any pony concentrate? Focus on the kiss. I shut my ears. The kiss. Its taste has begun to fade, but the memories are fresh. More profound than unicorn magic, more passionate than a pegasus wing nibble. An earth pony's kiss puts an end to both time and space. A single instant that lasts forever, and an endless infinity of dreams and honey. That is the true nature of an, nature of an earth pony's kiss. The subtle tightening of lips, that slight movement of the tongue, the softness of a lover's breath, all combine to tell a tale intimate and pure. Is this the whisper of your first love? Is it your final bittersweet goodbye? Only through an earth pony kiss could you tell. I stop and open my ears. Silence. That's something new, I snort. Ten whole minutes without any disturbance? As my ex-lover would say, it must be a new academy record. The press had a field day when they learned of that affair. What would they think when they learned of this one? Spoiled prince gets their hooves dirty, springs to mind. Let them talk. They have no idea what they're missing. So don't scoff as you read these words. Don't laugh and mock or scream or cry. Don't argue or disprove. Don't rationalize or explain. Engulf yourself with sensual magic, if you will or pierce the clouds wrapped in your lover's wings. But if you truly wish to taste a worthwhile kiss, take note and heed the advice I give. Forget both wings and magic deep. Bother not with grace or style or thoughts refined. Go search and find yourself an earth pony lover, for earth ponies will always be the best kissers. I levitate my quill away and looked at the poem. It's hardly among my best. Given a few more days, I could pol polish it to perfection. It wouldn't be the first time. Half the ponies in Canterlot would probably have a fit if they found out I was the author of so many of the poems they guiltily blush over. With a few more touches, I can make this one shine as well. No! I roll the scroll up. I just want to keep its rough edge. 
just like the kiss Lemaire was intended for. Perfection sometimes lies in imperfection, something most Cantorlites would never understand. Yet, I understand. This one is for you, my love, I whisper at the window. The moon is already half down. Another three hours, and the auntie will raise the sun. This one is for you, my treble clef. And that's the story. So, guess, take it away. Wow. Um, um, what I'm going to say first is just, I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion. For one main reason is just, I do not like poetry. So you guys take it away. Uh, the poetry parts aside, it feels like Lise was projecting a little bit with the whole trying to write something, but distractions. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. And I felt like I could really relate to that. So it was really comical for me. So it was a nice um, reprieve from the deep romantic poetry. Uh, that doesn't mean the poetry is bad by any means. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed this piece. Let me just put that out there. I noticed you, you know, when you when you got to the part about the profane part. I noticed you get your voice was like more into it. Yeah, I got a little into it. Milk, what did you think? I liked it. It's. Um... I see. I've always been a fan of poetry, so to see somebody do free verse and actually do it pretty well is nice to see. A lot of people just kind of half-ass their poetry or guess a lot on it. Uh, Flam, you aren't a big fan of poetry. Pencil, what did you think of the piece? So, a couple of things. Uh, the poetry itself, blank verse. I am a fan of blank verse. I think if you force yourself to rhyme, oftentimes you'll not do so well with trying to get your point across. So, kudos to that. Um, I also caught shades of the Dark Lady poems from Shakespeare, which I was really entertained by. Um, it, it's a poem in which Shakespeare basically insults the hell out of this lady. It says, like, she's gross. She's She's got bad teeth, but I love her a lot. And so there were some <laughs> moments in here where I kind of felt that way. And I like that. It, it does read a little bit Shakespearean, which... But th that in itself is where I actually find a little issue. We're, this is from the point of view of Blue Blood. And we've already seen, like, because we don't really get much characterization in this from Blue Blood, except that he is impatient as hell. Yes, he wants to concentrate, but he the whole time he looks down on every other aspect of his life. Like, damn the press for talking about me so much. God, that ex-lover of mine and her focusing on this. Like, he comes across as so self-centered and so pretentious. So pretentious! Because he's writing this flowery, flowery poem. And all the while, he's just talking smack about his lover's way of life. How do you, de how do you deal with it? Because you have to deal with such problems? He comes across as just this undeniably self-centered, pretentious prick. But is that not blue blood? It is, but the thing is, if you're trying to write this as a romance, it makes the poem seem like he's being overdramatic. Hmm. It, I think it actually detracts from the poem to include so much of him just basically whining in his own head. How dare yeah. they distract me from writing this perfect, beautiful poem about this beautiful woman who is also just oh man she's a commoner how much does that suck like dude so it adds like a sense of pretense to it it, it does <coughs> and i think if you're trying to write this as kind of a shipping love story i don't think that works i oh. i don't i i love so much about this but if your point here's the thing if your point was to make blue blood a romantic character i don't think this does that it kind of makes him a jerk that's trying to... I I kind of agree with that when you when you frame it that way. When you frame it this way, it kind of seems like he's writing this that way he can get into uh, Octavia, I'm assuming, Octavia's pants yeah. again. 
get into. Uh, another thing I've noticed, he sort of comes out a little bit racist because he says, he basically writes down, how do you put up with all the, you know, basically living in the slums with all the crying what, children and what whatnot? Do you, what do you mean, you people? Yeah, that's, that's how it looks. Right down to like, God, how dare I raise my voice to my guards? Ah, oh, the press would probably make fun of me. It's like, wow. Wow. You have fucking servants. Stop complaining. Anyway. <laughs> so it's consistent with Blue Blood's character, but it's not consistent with what he's doing. Like, there's a disconnect between what he's actually doing and the way he acts. Like, what's the motivation that leads to this point? And, and the whole poem is basically talking smack about people who don't get it. Probably the most telling line to me, the most telling line to me about this is... Perfection sometimes lies in imperfection. Something most Cantorlites would never understand, yet I understand. Like, wow, way to think you're above everyone else. That is such a huge assumption that he makes. And the whole time he's trying to talk about how earth ponies are the best. It reads like somebody, who, a rich, spoiled kid, saying... I love playing in the playground because all of those lovely playground kids that I meet there are so unsophisticated and so not stuck up while being stuck up as hell themselves. And if that was the point here, beautiful. I fucking love it. But if the point was to make Blue Blood a romantic character, uh, I, th I think this story shoots itself into the foot by making Blue Blood so close to the show. I think this does really well at being like if this is supposed to be a character study of blue blood he's trying in his head to do this really romantic gesture but he's coming across as being a big asshole um i i can really see that i see what you're saying um and i i honestly didn't catch that right at first after i got done reading the whole piece and i just had the sense of like wow that was really flowery that was really nice and you you saw right through that well, I mean, Lisa is a talented writer. I know this for a damn fact, and which is which is why I'm not entirely sure if this was intentional or not. I, I I am not entirely certain if this was an excuse to write some really beautiful poetry, which it was, or if this was more of a character exploration, like you said. And I, I will stop now and let other people weigh in on that because I have very much spoken my mind. What do you guys think? I I happen to speak with Lise on occasion, and whenever we talk about Blue Blood, and I say, oh, for comedic effect, we should make him like a jerk, and, she's, and he, she, Lise, always says, why do you always assume Blue Blood is a jerk? He could be a nice guy for all you know. Mm. So. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, hmm. No. <laughs> hmm. Well, no. That 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 does provide some insight because that means it it could be a lot more to like what what pencil said. It it was more like trying to show romantic uh, blue blood in a romantic light. And if it's doing that, it still comes across as blue blood being super self centered and. But that's the blue blood character. Than that. I I know and I agree. So that's what I'm saying. Like it. it because of the character you present Blue Blood as being, I think it invalidates all of the beauty and intimacy and sweetness and love in the poetry itself. Oh, I, I agree with that, to be honest. And maybe not everyone will feel that way, and that's fine. Yeah, which is why I'm, I'm happy to hear other opinions on that. I really am. Can so. we just end this? Can we end this recording with a synchronized hmm? <laughs> okay. Mm. Thank you for watching this. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of the Writers Workshop. Three, two, one. Hmm. <laughs>